Yo, what's up guys? Sour God Gamer 33 here, and today we're going to be looking at Bigfoot sightings. Not sure if you heard of the spooky creature before, but let's get right into it. So if my calculations are correct, Bigfoot is in this forest. All right, let's go. All right, I don't think he should be too far away, so let's keep going. <gasps> So if you're under the age of 25 and have been using the internet since the early 2010s, you've most likely watched spooky Bigfoot sightings somewhere in your life. Bigfoot, despite it seemingly being a huge gorilla, has been plagued and coated with mystery. So much so, to the point where Bigfoot has come to the likes of the Loch Ness Monster and the Tooth Fairy. His incredible popularity has also sparked many YouTubers to talk about top 10 Bigfoot sightings. Seriously, how does this have a million views? But we're not going to be talking about that. See, instead of talking about how a drone saw a spooky ape, we're gonna be going on the App Store and play some of the many Bigfoot games that people have made. And boy, are they interesting. So, are these games any good? Are they any scary? Well, let's find out. As without further ado, let's take a look at some saturated Bigfoot games. The first game I'm gonna be playing is Big King Monster Hunter. Okay, so slight difference, but instead of hunting Bigfoot, we're hunting King Kong. Because why not? Reading the description, the game says, Have you been looking for Big King Monster Shooter games? No. If yes, no. then you are going to love this FPS wild animal hunting game. And looking at the reviews, all of them give it a 5-star rating, saying stuff like parts I love, graphics, gun, how big he is, and scariness. Wow, with reviews like that, I can't wait to play this game. So let's hop in, shall we? What? Okay, so I don't know what these reviews are on about, but I don't think this is exactly a great game. <laughs> the first issue I have is that the buttons on your HUD are too big. Seriously, they take up nearly half of your screen, and a lot of them you aren't even gonna use for most of the time. But hey, look at these gaming graphics. Alright, so after grabbing a medkit from Half-Life, I suppose it was time to hunt down King Kong. And after a minute of walking and hearing his screams, I found him. And oh my goodness, is his design awful. For whatever reason, the model of Bigfoot, I mean King Kong, is just a large gorilla. And when he attacks you, he doesn't even do that much damage. And that's if you stand still, because even walking backwards will cause him to kind of inch forward. Also, his head hitbox is a bit strange, so you won't even be able to hit him half the time if you're unlucky. But it's whatever. So after putting hot lead into his skull, he did a weird animation and finally died. Right, now I can go on to the next level. Wait, so that was it? There was only one level in this game, where all you have to do is just shoot an ape a couple times and that's it. Who is giving this a 5 star? I mean, there is a couple other things like some other weapons and places to explore, but those are kind of redundant because of how short the game was. There was even a difficulty section from easy to hard, but even on hard, Kong didn't really do anything. Well then, that was pretty easy. So now that we killed King Kong, we can now go on to the next game. The second game we'll be playing is Scary Evil Bigfoot Survival, where now we're hunting Bigfoot for real, I think. Enjoy the beauty of nature. With the view of mountain rivers, this is the perfect place for camping with friends. But at nighttime, you feel some movement in the bushes near you. The ground vibrates like an earthquake. Something big is coming towards you, and boom! A king-sized deadly monkey attack on the champ side. This is time to run for- okay, look, you get the point. And miraculously, this game only has one rating that voted a 2 out of 5. Which I don't blame. So, unlike the last game, this one has 8 levels in it. However, for simplicity's sake, I'll only be playing the first four. But don't worry though, as there isn't really much lore to this game that you're missing out on. The first objective you have to do is go to the home, find the key, open the door, and pick up the file. Kill monsters standing outside the home, whatever that means. In the game, you are given a variety of weapons. 
However, only one of them is an actual gun, while the rest of them are melee weapons. The levels also start out with a strange cutscene, hovering over an area. And now we're in. So, like the objective said, I killed this big guy, who I assumed was the almighty Bigfoot- oh wait, he's already dead. Huh. Along with these random variants of Bigfoot, there's also these random spooky girls no clipping around the map. And if you get too close to them, they come to you and disappear. I don't really know what they were supposed to do. For some reason as well, as you explore the map, there's these random sound effects and skull particles that splash on your screen for no reason. Which was kind of annoying. But anyways, after getting a key and completing the first level, I went on to do other things like save a random girl who was sitting very oddly, kill some monsters for whatever reason, and with level 4, having to defend my house. Which, Jesus, this is what it looks like. Oh, and as you might have guessed, the AI isn't great. What a surprise. But yeah, that's basically it. There isn't really a whole lot of complexity to this game, and the levels are about as mundane as you can imagine. I eventually went on to complete the rest of the four levels, but they weren't really that interesting either. So I'm just gonna leave it off here. So without further ado, let's just move on to the next game. The next game we'll be playing is Bigfoot Yeti Monster Hunter. Where, as the title suggests, Bigfoot turns into a spooky yeti, and of course, we have to kill him. Looking at the app store, this game has about 73 ratings that rounds up to a 4.4. With the description reading, Bigfoot Yeti Monster Hunter is an FPS horror survival game where you play as a brave monster, hun monster hunter who looks for a deadly yeti monster deep in the forest. That was all one sentence, by the way. So, loading into the menu, it gives us a difficulty choice from easy to hard, where the harder it gets, the more yetis you have to kill. The place where you spawn in is a small little house that is completely stacked with weapons, but you can only carry two at a time, so most of these aren't really useful. You're also given a bunch of meat and bear traps as well, so let's go hunting for Bigfoot, which like the first game, is again based on a single level, meaning that once you do kill the yetis, which mind you isn't hard to do and don't do that much damage to you, then you complete the game. And your reward? An endless stream of advertisements about gambling that you can't escape from. I'm being serious, for some reason once I exited out of an ad, it just played another one. Thanks a lot Jebba Takiya Samiya. Not only do the yetis not do that much damage, but their AI is strange as well. In that they will suddenly dash away from you the moment you fire. Which results in this cat and mouse game where Bigfoot keeps running away from you. The terrain as well isn't very good either. As even if you go up on a moderately elevated slope, you will get completely stuck. And on top of that, there's the usual issues in these games like too many buttons on your screen, clunky movement, and the games being too short. To be honest, there isn't really much else that this game has to offer. So like always, we can now move on to the next game. So the last game we'll be playing is the Bigfoot Hunting Jungle Escape, which simultaneously is the best and worst game that we'll be covering in this video. But first, as always, we have to read the description, which says, Be aware, it is the Bigfoot monster hunting FPS game, and you are the animal survival hero in the wild adventure game. Make the wild escape story that you'll remember for years. And the reviews are a bit mixed, with some giving it a 2 star saying there are too many Bigfoots, and others giving it a 5 star but saying it's too dark. And there's around 30 ratings that rounds up to a 4.3. And now we're in. So the first thing I notice is that there is a large paywall and a lot of the items that you can use. In the game, you can only use the pistol, but if you want more weapons, you'll have to spend $5 oh, on each of them. Wow, There's also a shop too that allows you to buy the in-game currency. Great. However, thankfully the game gives you 100,000 cash so you can buy the guns anyway, which doesn't make that much sense, but hey, at least I don't have to spend $20 on this game. As for the game itself, it's based on a level system, with each one having to kill a certain number of Bigfoots. But again, I'll only be playing the first few levels for simplicity. A neat feature that this game has is the ability to have these dogs come and hunt with you, but while they do help in distracting the apes, that's about all they can do as they barely do any damage, and if you attack them, they go and attack you instead. Another thing that also doesn't do that much damage is your guns. They suck, but in contrast to the last few games, I actually like this more, and would rather have weak weapons than guns that can two-shot Bigfoot. Uh, oh wait, never mind. The sniper rifle in this game two-shots them anyways, because yes. Also, unlike the last few games, the pathfinding for the Bigfoots is actually serviceable. And not only that, they actually do a lot of damage to you, making it so that you have to keep your distance from them. But like one of the reviews said, 
Yeah, this game is really dark, <laughs> which sucks even more considering we don't have a flashlight. Or maybe we do, but the flashlight we have is this dim yellow radius around the player. I don't really know. This game does a lot right and a lot wrong when it comes to the balance, features, and gameplay of the shooter. It finally makes it so that Bigfoot does proper damage to you, but in contrast, we have to again two-shot them with a sniper rifle. There's these dogs that help us kill them, but they also can kill you. There's a variety of weapons that you can use, but they're behind a paywall, but also not. Again, it's hard to say because almost every element in this game conflicts with one another. And after going on level 5, it was very clear that the gameplay was getting repetitive, since the goal was to always kill X amount of Bigfoots. So I'm gonna be ending this review here now. And with that, we can now finally leave and move on, concluding the last Bigfoot game. And that was the last game that I'll be looking at in this video. So in conclusion, after playing many of these timeless masterpieces, I can now say safely that Bigfoot is in fact real. And every time you see him in these top 10 videos, you are seeing real footage of him. <laughs> uh, well, I don't really have much else to say. Right, now, shilling time. So this is an announcement I made way back in April when I made the Counter-Strike video. But to the people that still ask me what music I use, please stop. I now have a music playlist for every one of my videos, which not only makes my life more convenient, but also yours too. Also, did you know that I have a second channel? Yeah, there's not really a whole lot there at the moment, but I'll probably upload sometime there soon, so subscribe I guess. There I'll be making more lower for content if I need to. Alright, and that's about all I have to say. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you sometime in the future. Goodbye. Hello everybody, my name is Mark Blind. Welcome back to Bigfoot. A funny thing happened just yesterday. I literally finished hunting Bigfoot. And the moment that I closed the game, 